and welcome to the FEZ show. It is the 28th of April and we have some great topics to discuss today. So let's get straight into it. On today's show, we have William Dodds and Jasmine Butler. Morning all, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Yep, good, thank you. Oh, it's, it's raining outside. It's the first sort of show that we've done this, I think, in the whole of lockdown time that it's actually raining, which is... Which is odd, I think. It's just it's just amazing. But how, how have you all been? Jasmine, you haven't been on the show for a while. How have you been? How How's lockdown life treating you? It's going okay, actually. Missing the sun now. I'm, I'm a pasty white girl, so I've actually caught a tan in April, which never happens. So, you know, missing the sun now. <laughs> missing the sun, definitely. It was hard to get out of bed this morning with it being so grey and so dark this morning, Will. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's, it's taking its toll slowly. Um, but I guess if we have to be stuck inside, I'd rather it be raining than, than really nice. So, yeah, uh, just yeah, doing what you can. No. So we've got plenty of to discuss today. Obviously, we've got some great talking points from news, which we'll get onto later. And we've got some great YouTube questions as well to, to discuss. But the first thing we want to talk about, Jasmine, is what cities would we like Formula E to visit? And what cities would we like to see on the calendar? Because there's so many great cities um around the world that formerly haven't tapped into yet for me i'll start off with mine i'd love to go to tokyo i don't know what it is i think there's just so many tv programs at the moment around the world on amazon even in the uk where people are just going to japan going to tokyo and you know seeing the japanese culture and and, and how and showing off how mad japan is and i just think tokyo formerly have tried really hard to to tap into tokyo um to, to have a race but it just hasn't come across yet but jasmine where would you like Formula E to potentially go. Um, I'm going to agree with you with Tokyo. Obviously, they shut down some of the streets and they do all the Mario Kart racing. So why can they not shut down some of the streets and do some Formula E racing? Um, but myself, I would like to see a race in Australia. It does have such a big racing fan base over there. Maybe in Sydney. Um, you know, what we got the Formula One in Melbourne. We don't really need to go over there with them being there. Um, I think it would just be really good to have one out that area. Yeah, I think Sydney, Sydney for me would be amazing. Like if we went to Sydney, that's a proper, that's a global city, especially if we can get close to the Opera House. I know they like to have like um, iconic venues sort of in the background, even if it's in the background rather than um, being actually close to it. But Sydney would be, would be amazing. And again, Formula E trying to been tapping into Australia for ages. I know Adelaide, for example, Adelaide, obviously because they've got a track there already, which they could sort of use, which is already used for racing that they, they'd like. But even like the Gold Coast, the Brisbane, you know, there's, there's plenty of places, um, Will, that you could potentially go to in Australia. Where where would you like to see Formula E go? Um, I think as it's somewhere that hasn't really explored yet, would be um, be cool to go to Africa. Um, I know there's a history of, of uh, Formula One racing in, in South Africa, so I think that's a, a potential, uh, it's, a, yeah, it's a potential market that, that Formula E could look to expand into. Um, I'm sure that there would be, there'd be some interest in that. Um, Otherwise, I think a race in um, in Brazil would be would be great. Obviously, they've got a huge uh, motorsport heritage, and uh, I think the Brazilian Grand Prix in Formula One is always kind of one of the highlights. Um, otherwise, potentially just uh, another race in the US. Um, so I know at the, at the moment we have have the New York race, but there are plenty of cities uh, I think that would make a brilliant backdrop for a Formula E race. So it's just about about kind of gauging where the interest would be potentially and um i think formula formula in in say you know la or something would be awesome yeah in america anywhere in america i'd love i've been to chicago too many times and i'm constantly mapping up formula re routes around chicago that we could potentially you know go to because obviously you've got lake michigan there uh, and it the water is beautifully blue and i just think and they've got this observatory area which is then a massive car park near where soldier field where the chicago bears play and i'm like we could do a race here like there's not much disruption here um but anyway uh, for me though going back to your african um, point of view like egypt cairo how, how amazing would that be to go to egypt obviously egypt's a massive country historically and and cairo is a big capital city that would be that would be huge to go into africa so i know we do dip into africa with morocco but even you know Egypt on the other side of North, North Africa is is important. South Africa, of course, Cape Town, Johannesburg, um, 
th th those would be amazing. Um, I don't know about the middle of Africa, but I think it would be kind of cool. I don't know if we could, I don't know if a race in Nigeria or something like that would be, you know, something different. And that's why I think, you know, these cities that Formula E go to, they should be sort of different to what people have done before. Even in Europe, for example, like don't go to the, these countries that everyone, that these historic, well built up company, countries like Germany, Italy, France, go to somewhere like Croatia, for example, maybe Jasmine, like a country that's, you know, pristine. Everyone likes to go to Croatia because it's such a beautiful country, but we don't really have any racing there. So maybe we could create a racetrack in Croatia and give people more reason to go to Croatia or something like that. Yeah, when you mentioned um, Croatia earlier on, Dubrovnik immediately comes to my mind. It's a really popular area. Um, the only issue with Dubrovnik is it's all built in walls, so it'd be quite a struggle to get a race in there. But you've got you've got so many beautiful um, just scenery in Croatia. It might not even have to be in a city. They might be able to pop it in the middle of nowhere. People can, you know, very popular country, people would still be able to get there. Um, maybe even down near the split area. Uh, but, yeah, very up-and-coming um very up and coming destination, it, extremely popular. You've even got um, Montenegro, which is obviously neighbouring Croatia, has become really popular as well. So it would be nice to see something over that area. I'm sure a lot of people that would go there would like to tie in a holiday around that area anyway. Yeah, the problem is with the um, problem with countries like Montenegro, Croatia, for example, is you know they aren't those big countries will and i suppose when you're thinking of a calendar you want these iconic cities like formerly have they've jumped to new york they've jumped to london rome paris you know montreal when we were there they want these iconic cities that have you know that people travel to anyway and there's always a bit of a hustle and bustle in those cities so going to somewhere which isn't as you know popular let's say you know would be difficult you know to sort of maybe gauge attraction for people to go oh that would be a cool race or that would be something they'd want to watch yeah but i think as, as jasmine said they're definitely becoming more popular as holiday destinations um so i think that they're definitely one that potentially in the future there could be interest in um and i think i think obviously the, the the thing that we have to think of is is um while we want these kind of like destination races um it's also important to to make sure that the infrastructure is, is there for a, a, a good racetrack that will provide entertaining racing. So to be honest, I'm up for anywhere that will allow Formula E to, to build a track where we can get uh, a good crowd in uh, and uh, a crowd that's kind of excited about Formula E and, and good racing. Um, you know, obviously we do have places on the, on the calendar like Diria where, I mean, you know, not, not necessarily a bad track, but um, you know, there aren't huge crowds there. And I think that, something like uh, about uh races where it's, it's it's very much like a destination there's a there's a large crowd and and clearly a crowd that's really enthusiastic about formula e. i think that's something really important but at the same time you do need to travel to these new places to 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 build the global reach of the sport and um that's why i think yeah moving into africa beyond beyond obviously marrakesh and uh you know potentially going to the us as well is really important in terms of growing the sports appeal and and just growing the the number of fans uh worldwide yeah, so in terms of like going into these new, like Diria, for example, it's what I see is like it's like a promotion thing. They're trying to, you know, show Saudi Arabia in a different light. And, you know, as I, I was having these conversations with people like you feel sorry for these Saudi Arabian people because obviously the way that their, their world is that they love seeing all these events. You know, you get people who have gone into Saudi Arabia and said, you know, they feel so sorry. The people are so warm, so welcoming. They really appreciate you being there. And it's sort of shown these countries in a different light. And it's also, you know, for the likes of maybe Croatia or something like that or different cities. Like if I go back to Japan, for example with the rugby world cup that we had you know yokohama osaka they were cities that even former could go to even kyoto for example like going back to going back to something that's quite historical you don't actually have to go to this main city or the you know the capital city or the main city in that country you might say for example obviously like new york might be a bit of a stronger appeal than washington dc so going to different cities within those countries and sort of build up those cities and make them more of a tourist attraction, Jasmine, you know, would be would be a good shout. Yeah, so um, I actually went to Japan myself last year, not for the Rugby World Cup, just for a holiday. And there is, um, I went to Osaka, I went to Kyoto, even Nara. I know that there's deers everywhere, so there would be a risk of those. But um, they they do have the facilities in 
quite a lot of the cities to be able to to do um, these sorts of races there. Um, yeah, necessarily it doesn't have to be the capital, as, as you've mentioned. Um, I would prefer to go to New York over Washington 100%. Um, when I was thinking over these questions, my favourite places in the world, as cliche as it is, is Las Vegas. And I was like, if there was a Formula E race somewhere in Las Vegas, hands down, I'd be interested in it. But the thing that then worries me is how, how would they do it in those sorts of places? Like, How would they get the commission to shut down the streets would they have to do it in a racetrack somewhere and I think in Vegas they've only got the um the uh NASCAR tracks so yeah not necessarily does it have to be in a capital city where it brings the pull in so example with the Formula One they don't have um a race slap bang in the middle of London they have it in Silverstone which is in theory in the middle of nowhere so sometimes it's more it can be just more of the appeal of if someone likes Formula E they'll go anywhere to watch the race yeah, Vegas would be amazing. That's obviously they made a fictional track for the Vegas E race a couple of years ago for the sim race, first sim race that uh, Formula E did, and they did their promotional run um, in Vegas, the first sort of promotional run with Lucas Degrassi up the strip. So they have used Las Vegas as as a um, as a promotional stunt, but whether or not they'll make it a Formula E event, I don't know. But it would if they did. Wow, what a weekend that would be! To, to potentially go to Las Vegas and I'll tell you what that would attract a lot of people because obviously you do Las Vegas and you do a Formula E race at the same time which would be pretty amazing but there was one actually there were some countries obviously in terms of big countries that we actually haven't gone to yet and Will you said earlier in the show um, Portugal, Lisbon like that's you know the capital of Portugal, Portugal is a big country and you know Formula E tapping into Portugal and more of Spain which they haven't really done yet would be amazing yeah, and these these are places that um, you know have a history of of motorsport. Um, you know, you look at the MotoGP calendar, and it's pretty much predominantly made up of of, of tracks in Spain. And then you think, you know, we used to have Estoril in in Portugal. Um, so I think that Spain and Portugal are two countries with a with a history of, of motorsport that definitely would potentially be um, suited to Formula E. Um, one track that I think. You know, it divides uh, Formula One fans is Valencia, but I think that that would actually be really set up nicely, especially if you shorten some of those straights for a Formula E race. Um, the infrastructure there is really cool. Um, the the old they're using the old docks and marketplaces uh, as the the pit lane. So I think that that's, that track would actually be very well suited to to Formula E, as I said, with a couple of minor adjustments. So that's definitely one that I think um, has almost worked in Formula One. I think with 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 um, DRS and the modern tyres, it, it works slightly better than it did in, say, kind of 2009-10. Um, so, yeah, Valencia would be one. And then Lisbon is a, is a very much a destination city for for, uh, for travellers. So I think that that would be one that I would, I would target as well. No, for sure. But the problem is with Formula E is that we could just list hundreds and hundreds. And, we should go here. We should go here. We should go there. I want to race there. And you just have a calendar of about 50 races, probably, if we, we got what we wanted. But there's there's some, definitely there's, there are some cities that we'd love to see um, on the calendar. If you have any cities that you'd love to see on the calendar that we haven't mentioned, because, you know, we're silly and we forgot about that place, um, put them in the comments below. Love to hear what you think, um, what cities you'd love to see in Formula E. But I want to move on to the next topic. Now, this is a bit of a meaty one, and especially with the news that's been coming out lately. So... Jasmine, I'm going to start with you. The topic is, do Ferrari need Formula E more than Formula E needs Ferrari? It's a difficult one. I'd say if Ferrari needed Formula E, it'd be more now than never. With with the whole pandemic that's going on right now, I'd probably say that in terms of a lot of racing teams, Ferrari aren't one of the ones that are as hard hit in terms of um, you know cash flow and things like that and in terms of you know the previous competitions that they've done yes form they are mostly in Formula One a lot of people when they think of Ferrari they think Formula One um, but they have done things like the 24-hour Le Mans before um, so it's something that they could probably get the interest in um, you know a lot of people will see Ferrari racing I wouldn't necessarily meet say that Ferrari need Formula E, but I think for Formula E to be able to pull in, you know, a team with the name Ferrari in it would be quite a big accomplishment for the, well, not just an accomplishment, but quite a big feat for the, um, for the uh, 
uh, competition. The thing is, for me, for me, I think Ferrari need. I don't think Formula E needs Ferrari. Pull out there now. Formula E do not need Ferrari, but Ferrari come knocking, they're going to take that, you know, and shove them straight in the championship, even if it means making an extra slot on the calendar, on the on the grid to make it 26 cars. You know, they'll give it to them. Um, but Ferrari, in my opinion, need Formula E because the world is shifting. You know, the news lately that Audi are pulling out DTM. And you're right in what you're saying is that, you know, for, when you think Ferrari, you think Formula One because that's how they do their marketing. You know, they market themselves through Formula One. But the world is changing. And whether or not Formula One will change with that world as quickly as what Formula E are doing. And then when you've got the likes of Mercedes, Porsche, Audi, BMW in, in Formula E, you feel like, you know, for Ferrari, in order to be on the trend of EVs and get the technology first, would need to be in Formula E in order to do that. You know, there's so many other manufacturers who are out there that, could, you know, would benefit from being in Formula E. And I think Ferrari would be one of them. But yes, I do agree. Formula E, they don't need Ferrari. We've coped fine so far for the last six years without Ferrari. And I reckon we'd cope for the next 10 years if we didn't have Ferrari easily as probably one of the most competitive championships in the world, Will. I, I agree with you. I don't think that either needs the other, but I think it would be beneficial potentially for both. Um, Formula E can definitely continue to survive and thrive without Ferrari, but just the, the, the name and the fan base that that team brings with it would be a, a boost for Formula E undoubtedly. And just having that name on the on the grid would be a kind of an immense coup for Formula E, to be honest. You know, Formula E has a number of incredibly established and well-renowned manufacturers, but none of them are quite Ferrari in terms of what it means to motorsport. So I don't think Formula E needs Ferrari. Formula E can do very well without it, but you're not going to say no, as you said. And I think that if there were any signals from Ferrari that it was interested in Formula E, I think Formula E would very much bite the hand off. Um, from the other side, I think that Ferrari, just as, as a brand, are less inclined to more move towards EVs than, say, some, some of the kind of uh, less premium um, car manufacturers. I think that, you know, brands like, uh, brands like Toyota and Honda are potentially would expect them to be looking at, at Formula E more than I am looking at Ferrari. Um, Ferrari, I know, have been less impacted by coronavirus just because of the the style of and the nature of the kind of people who, who buy Ferraris is, is different. And potentially they're people who've been less impacted by the coronavirus. It's also just a smaller pool of people who, who buy Ferraris. Uh, a second thing I would think is that the kind of people who buy Ferraris ne might not necessarily be prioritising kind of efficiency you know, when you buy a Ferrari, you're not buying it because um, it will not, you know, because of its limited environmental impact or kind of fuel efficiency. I think that you buy Ferrari as, as a kind of uh, thing of beauty or status um, uh, possession. So I think that Ferrari and kind of electric vehicles don't necessarily naturally go together. Of course, I'm sure it's something that they will be looking at and there will be some sort of... Um, some sort of movement towards EVs from Ferrari in the future at some point, but uh, I don't necessarily think it's like the natural next step for them to take. And, you know, if, if they are looking at furloughing a number of people or, you know, if they're looking, sorry, they haven't furloughed anyone yet, but if they are looking to, you know, move resources into a new championship, I think that a Formula E team would be one of the options out there. I think that, you know, maybe running an IndyCar team or kind of a full-time WEC operation would be another option and i can potentially actually see ferrari going into into a kind of full-time work operation potentially more likely than than formula e i think that that maybe just suits suits their kind of um brand slightly more naturally than than formula e does but you know i wouldn't i wouldn't rule it out and i, th I think that potentially it could help ferrari shift um their image towards something a little bit more favorable favorable maybe um, among certain fans but also they have a huge amount of really passionate fans so it'll be a huge boost in that sense do we think maybe like 
you know, a sister company. We're like, for example, we mentioned WEC there. Obviously, they've got AF Corsa, for example, who run their GT program, which run the Ferrari 488s, for example. Um, so that's, you know, that's still linked to Ferrari in one shape or form. Jasmine, you obviously, you've got Alfa Romeo, you've got Fiat, for example. Like, are you expecting, you know, that formerly might, they, a Ferrari might go, you know what, we might not put Ferrari's name in there, but, you know, we might maybe put a Fiat in there, we might put an Alfa Romeo in there to sort of say, you know, we're, we'll use that technology to help build us up i'd say that's more likely than ferrari going in obviously there's been rumors going around at the moment saying you know if ferrari have to lo- lower their budget in formula one they're thinking about pulling out again it's not 100 percent confirmed but um maybe if they have to pull out they might think oh okay you know we need to be in some sort of racing competition we'll put our name out there but i think if they are to continue in you know formula one it might be a good idea maybe to start off with someone like Alfa Romeo um, you know, have them racing for a year or two. And then if it is highly successful for them, then why not have then Ferrari in there as well? So it's, it's something that you can see happening. I just think it's, it's just a branding thing, especially for Ferrari. And I think Will's hundred percent right. You know, the people who buy Ferraris are not buying Ferraris for an electric engine. They're buying Ferraris as, you know, a sign that they're doing really well in life and that they've got a really, you know, that they can show off all this power, basically, that is under the hood of a Ferrari. Um, But the most interesting thing, though, that came out yesterday was this Italian investor called Gianfranco Pizzuto, which I believe is the correct pronunciation. I have no idea. Um, I know the Gianfranco part. Um, But he is looking to invest and put, you know, a Formula E team from Italy, Italy, sorry, um, on the grid in 2022. Now, We know at Formula Reason that there is a team up for sale. So he said, all we need to do is get the funding. Now, I don't know if that's the funding to buy out this team. I don't know how much as as speaking to the money in Formula is getting, um, you know, so much, so expensive that, you know, you can't, you need to have a proper investors now and a proper backing from some partner in order to actually like move into Formula E these days. It's not like at the beginning when teams were entering back in season one, it was about six million. So whether or not he's finding the funds to actually buy out this team would be pretty incredible. But Will, what did you make of um, the announcement that, you know, another team potentially on the grid, obviously Italian, and we know that there's a team up for sale. So, and he wants to do it within two years. So it sort of makes sense. I think it's fortuitous timing rather than necessarily a coordinated you know effort between i know he's an employee of he's involved somehow in fiat chrysler group but i don't think that this is ferrari kind of making moves to get into formula i think it's rather fortuitous in that sense um yeah i think i think that it, it would make sense that he's saying this if potentially he also like like we know knows that um there is a team looking to to pull out of of Formula E, um, in terms of in terms of Ferrari's involvement, maybe they would go down the route of um, of using one of their other brands that's associated to to kind of uh, brand the entry. I know that I can't see Alfa Romeo doing it. I think they're not having a huge amount of success with with Formula One, and I I, I can see them being one of the teams, or at least you know under the name Alfa Romeo to to struggle with. Uh, the coronavirus and the, the impact that's going to have on the team, but yeah, I think it, it it would be good to to you know if if um, Formula E is looking at losing an entry, it's good to see that there is someone interested in kind of like taking that up straight away because that's obviously good for the just the kind of health of the um, of the championship. Whether this has anything to do with Ferrari, I, I'm not so sure. Um, you know, I think Bonotto was also you got to remember. I mean, he was saying that you know maybe if we have to have a reduced budget, we'll be putting people elsewhere. I think maybe he's even kind of saying, you know, you don't always know what his kind of motives behind that are. I think sometimes maybe he's, he's using that as a kind of deterrent to, to Formula One to, to lower the budget cap because obviously, you know, Ferrari don't want that to happen. So, you know, it, it's always difficult to, to tell. You know, we all know that Ferrari are notorious for threatening to pull out of Formula One and, and so on. So I think it's always difficult at this stage to, to tell. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's good. It's good to see that there's someone who's interested in potentially taking up this vacant spot in the sport. I was just, it was just wild though the way that it was put. He posted it on LinkedIn, and the car had Jasmine. It had like 
references to Bentley on there. Like it, it had the Brett Leng sort of the wings, the Bentley wings on there. And, you know, people were like, are you going to team up with Bentley? Because you've got all this Bentley sponsorship all over your car. Uh, and Bentley very quickly said, said no. It had Pirelli tyres on there. Um, so it, it really looked like a, a flash in the pan sort of announcement, like not much notice had probably gone into Formula E and maybe some branding taken from other motorsport cars just, um, and teams put on the car. So it was sort of wild and it came out of nowhere, really. No one was expecting it. Um, I think it's all, you know, as we said, we know that there's a team up for sale and there's now a man come up that has got the money to be able to buy a team. I think probably in that case, that may, that may be a prototype. We don't know. We don't know the ins and outs at the moment. Um, it would be maybe good to see a team like Bentley in there. You know, they're, they're very, very popular cars. But I think just at the moment, it's difficult with Formula E not racing. Um, it's, it's very hard to say whether it's just hearsay, you know, people making rumours or whether, you know, we have generally seen a prototype for a car. It just wasn't supposed to be re- supposed to be released that early i think jasmine's right in saying that i know from if you ever hear ross braun talk about um that that kind of summer between honda becoming braun gp uh, i'm sure many people who've who've kind of overseen a a transfer between a a, a formula one team from from kind of one ownership to another is that you do always get a lot of chances um a lot of people who kind of just want to put their name out there and i think as, as as jasmine said it's difficult to know how seriously to take this especially if they're kind of shoving Pirelli tires and and Bentley branding on this uh on this car without any any uh agreement it's difficult to know how to to seriously to take it um I think the best thing to do is you know at some point I'm sure this will become come kind of widely um acknowledged that there's one team looking to pull out and maybe we'll know a bit more about it but I think there are always there are always chances there are always people just willing to throw their hat into the ring regardless of how much substance there is behind it that's very true and we have put in like an interview request to try and see if we can um speak to him and see what he does but you know he he calls himself an ev pioneer you know he wants to call his team scuderia e um which you know obviously with ferrari being known as scuderia which was we thought was quite interesting considering what we wanted to talk about today um he's also hilariously in italy um well not hilariously but you know he's the ambassador for Jaguar which I thought was interesting um in Italy so for electric vehicles so he's he's positioned himself Gianfranco um into sort of this electric vehicle market but obviously it's still very early days hopefully we do get to speak to him and we can find out more about the topic so last little bit to talk about just to wrap up the show is our new segment where we ask the fans some YouTube questions and we've got one and we've got a really tricky one today so what they have come up with so basically the main overarching question is do do we formally need to go through a world championship in the traditional global sense of we we go from one country in the world and we go to all these different countries and then we have a championship very much like formula one do we need to have a world championship like that can we mix it up and they've given us some options jasmine of how we can mix up and it's very sort of an american style sort of sport thing where you might have two championships so instead of having you know one overarching championship you might have two championships maybe with like eight six teams for example uh, one in Europe, so they just race in Europe. One in maybe Asia and America, like it races in just those countries. And you just have two championships which run side by side to each other, but then they meet at the end for like a three or four race, like super knockout. Um, and so in order to crown whoever the world championship is. Like, do you think Formula E, you know, should continue this, what everybody else does, like we go from this country to this country to this country to this country? Or should Formula E be you know, intuitive, like, innovative in the way that they are with everything that they sort of approach and maybe approach a world championship in a completely different way in the future? In theory, it is, it is a very good idea. You know, it opens gateway for more, as we said, we discussed quite a lot of races earlier on where we'd like to see one in Valencia, we'd like to see one in Croatia. Um, it does then open to see if we can get a lot of those races to make Europe a bit more bulkier. I think one struggle you're going to have is with the Asia side. So at the moment, predominantly in Formula E, they don't have masses amount of Asia races. So to split them in half and do, you know, a mini championship in Asia, a mini championship in Europe and bring it together at the end. I think the struggle you're going to have is 
Europe's going to be great. Europe will probably thrive because at the moment there is, you know, we have races in London. We have races in, um, we've had them in Monaco before previously. We've had them in Germany. We've kind of nearly had them everywhere in Europe, which is a big name. Whereas if you go over to Asia, we've had them in, you know, China and then that's Malaysia. what we're going to have them in Jakarta. Yeah, Malaysia. That's really, yeah, I think there's been a few more. So it would need a lot of headway in Asia to make it to make it ideal. So at the moment it works because you've got then the filler of going to America. You've got then, you know, there's been races in South America. I think if you were to maybe have one in Europe and then have like, a, should we say one in like Europe because there's predominantly races and then a few in Asia, a few in America and a few in South America that might work but predominantly have Europe and Asia I think it would be quite a struggle no for me when I first saw it I was like man that's just mad like it would never work and it would never gain interest but then when it was sort of explained so the questions came in from Owen Hell who sort of put it out there and then someone else called Jared Fossey he sort of like said well you can make it like an American thing where you have one side one side they meet playoffs and then you have this like shootout to be world championship and I was like that just sounds amazing and I sort of understood it a bit more. So at the start, Will, I was like, don't really get it. Um, but now I'm like, you know what? If it happened, I wouldn't be like against it. I think a, a big concern with uh, the idea is that you would need at least 20 manufacturers who are kind of willing to spend the amount of money you need to compete competitively in, in Formula E. So we obviously we have 12 at, at the moment, but you need to then go up to find at least another eight manufacturers who are able to spend the amount that you need to be competitive in Formula E to have two competitive, fully, uh, kind of fully enabled championships. You then need to have this kind of convenient split between, you know, the two regions you want to do. So I, I think that having other electric series um, elsewhere sounds like a nice idea, but I think to, to kind of spread the pinnacle of electric motorsport, which I imagine Formula E kind of proclaims itself to be, you would need a huge number of, of manufacturers willing to put in the money required to be at that pinnacle. So I think that's a huge uh, potential drawback to the idea. Um, another thing is that Formula E has just gained world championship status um, from next season. So it will be known as, you know, winning the Formula E championship will be known as becoming the Formula E, Formula e world champion rather than just Formula E champion. So I imagine that having that status has some sort of... Uh, kind of requirement upon it so i mean it's a it's a kind of nice idea like it, it, it to see kind of the winners of multiple championships um compete against one another but i think if there are more formula e, if there are more kind of electronic motorsport series to pop up i can see it more being in the style of formula one and then indycar and then super formula with all slightly different rule sets slightly different budget requirements just because i can't see you getting 20 manufacturers worldwide kind of spending similarly large amounts of money and kind of abiding to the same rules because it just it's not something that's worked elsewhere yeah so for me though it'd be amazing because i think you know if you go to asia it might give like the likes of toyota and honda like a reason to get in because they don't have to travel too far so that might help um in its sense and maybe picking up manufacturers but i think you're you're totally right i think it'd be very difficult to sort of get the cars and the manufacturers in, in each place but we're running out of time I want to say a massive thank you, really enjoyed the show um, thank you both for coming on thanks Jack thank you Jack um, remember if you're really enjoying the content hit that like button and that subscribe button it really helps us out massively thank you so much for watching you've been watching the FEZ show, we'll be back tomorrow, goodbye <laughs>